we're just going to add two accessories to what we've already learned. If we know that the middle one is always, always suction, we're going to add our suction line accumulator. Now, we've already talked about this before, we're just going to cover it again. In the true suction line, this is going to protect the compressor from any potential liquid, or aka low amount of superheat. And this is important because as the outdoor temperature drops, it's possible to not boil all that refrigerant into a vapor before we get back to the compressor. This is going to protect the compressor from any potential liquid refrigerant. And also in the discharge line, it's always, always, always discharge, we're going to add our discharge line muffler because on a heat pump, a lot of times with your high compression ratios, you end up with a little bit more vibration, more pulsation. So that muffler is going to help quieten that down. Flip that around on you, but it's still the same exact thing. Of the three, the one pipe in the middle is going to the input side of our suction line accumulator, and then the output side is going to our compressor. So it's always going to be low temperature, low pressure, superheated vapor, suction gas. So if our superheated vapor gets too low, meaning not enough vapor, that means we potentially have liquid refrigerant coming back to our compressor. Now, liquid refrigerant will either directly damage the compression parts of the compressor, or it will wash the oil away from the bearings and then we end up running the compressor with refrigerant trying to lubricate it instead of liquid oil lubricating it and that liquid refrigerant does not lubricate well and it causes long-term damage to the compressor and that's really going to be important with a heat pump system because as the outdoor temperature drops we have less heat available and maybe not all that refrigerant boils to a vapor and we have very low superheated vapor that means we could trickle in liquid refrigerant so the suction comes in here hits this little channel and it opens up if there's liquid refrigerant the liquid refrigerant is going to be heavy it's going to fall down over here to the bottom, but we want to pull only vapor off. So in this tube that has the output, it comes all the way down to the bottom, and on the back side is the intake for it. So it's pulling in just vapor from the top of this, and it's feeding back to the compressor. And here's another view of the same thing. We can see here, this is where the suction gas is coming in, and it hits this little plate, the same plate you see here, it's this plate here. That suction gas is diverted out here, a little bit of turbulence, that liquid refrigerant is gonna fall down here to the bottom, so it just falls down to the bottom. And then the pickup tube is over here on the back side. You can't see it here, but it's back on the back side. This way it keeps the gas just from going straight from one to the other. But now that pickup tube is pulling the vapor, the lighter vapor at the top, it's pulling it down and then around to the exit. And this is that screen that we're talking about. Look how small, those little holes are in that screen, and even smaller is the hole in that pickup tube. So that oil comes through that screen, is picked up, and it carries on back to the compressor. So through the screen, carries on all the way back to that compressor. So that screen is really, really, really important. And if we have a burnout, it's a good chance we're gonna have to either drain the oil out of this or replace it. Now, a lot of people are big on draining the oil out, but you're still looking at a lot of work because you have to take both of these pipes loose. You have to undo the screw at the bottom. It's gonna be rusted up. And then you have to think about if you're gonna drain this out, you have this little diverter cup right here. So you gotta get all the oil to circulate around and then drain out this little hole right here before you can get it out. So it's gonna be a super pain. A lot of people would just prefer to replace them because if you have a new one, it's the same amount of work putting the new one in. Actually, it's less work putting the new one in than it is trying to drain the oil out. And then you know for sure that you don't have any clogged up holes there. But that'll kill the life of a compressor. And with rotary equipment, a lot of times you'll have two uh, suction accumulators. You'll have one right on the compressor. And that suction gas comes in, it hits the screen, this diverter plate. And all these little bitty grooves right here, all these little bitty channels, it allows that gas to fall this way, turbulate. The liquid refrigerant is going to fall to the bottom. The gas is pulled up right here through the center tube and down. And right here on the very side, you won't be able to see it in the camera, there's a little bitty oil, a hole, a little bitty orifice right there. And that's where it's pulling the oil back in on this one, just like it is doing on this one. But sometimes with these rotary heat pumps, you'll have this one on the compressor, and you'll also have this one as well to make sure that they don't get any liquid refrigerant coming back to that compressor. On the high side, we end up having the discharge line. High temperature, high pressure, superheated vapor, it goes into a muffler. And a muffler is just simply hollow inside. It allows for that gas, the pulsations, to expand. As those pulsations expand, it smooths out before it goes to reversing valve. And we can either send the heat inside or send the heat outside, whichever it's piped to. But it's simply always high pressure and just simply a muffler because the compression ratios can get high. You get a little bit more vibration, a little bit more pulsation. So that muffler helps quieten it down. This is simply hollow chamber. It's all it is. It allows for those pulsations of the gas to expand and smooth out before it continues on and it helps quiet it down a little bit. If you're working on a scroll compressor, the whole entire top side of that scroll is going to be a muffler itself. It allows for the same pulsations before the gas leaves, but sometimes you'll still see another muffler put on it. 
And here's an example of another muffler. It's just simply hollow inside. Nothing's inside of there, uh, but it just allows for those gases to come together. Here's an example of that muffler. Now don't get a muffler confused with a liquid line filter dryer. You notice the muffler is hollow, but a filter dryer has the desiccate. And if that hot gas comes out of here and hits this desiccate, it causes this stuff to come loose, travels to the system, and clogs up the whole entire system. And sometimes these look identical. We see the same size here, but if we tap on this liquid line filter dryer, it has a solid thud to it. And if we tap on a muffler, it has a hollow sound to it. So simply just, I don't know which one it is, give it a little tap over there, and then you can tell hollow sounding versus, oh, somebody put a liquid line dryer in a hot gas line, and we gotta fix that. As far as our drawing goes, where we have our true suction line, we just simply add our suction line accumulator there. We just simply add it. I like to draw the little loop inside of there so I understand and make sure that we remember the importance of that oil port in there. But as long as we draw something representing there's a suction line accumulator protecting the compressor from the potential of liquid refrigerant coming back, that's what's important. On the muffler side, just that discharge line. It's always hot gas. We write muffler. Doesn't matter what mode it's in, you're still gonna have that same thing. The true suction line will have the the suction line accumulator, the true discharge line, the hot gas line will have the muffler. And so we just simply transpose that onto our refrigeration cycle for a heat pump in heating mode or sending a hot gas inside, uh, pumping the liquid to the outside, or same thing with the heat pump refrigeration cycle in AC mode. So we have the same exact components here. Here we have our true suction port right there, our compressor and our muffler. It's a little hard to get all those notes written in there, but if you practice it, the more that you write this down, the more that you draw these refrigeration cycles, the easier it's gonna come to you. When I walk up to a heat pump system, this is what I'm seeing. When you look inside there, there's gonna be parts and components everywhere, but I'm looking at this. I'm seeing in it, heating mode, I'm looking at this. I'm sitting in a hot gas inside. Cool mode I'm looking at it like this I'm sending the hot gas outside and I start my refrigeration cycle so I visibly see this in my mind when I'm working on a piece of equipment and when people call me about problems I'm taking the problems they have and I'm putting them on the refrigeration cycle to see where's the refrigerant where, where are my temperatures where's the problem going to be because a lot of your diagnostics after airflow is going to be right here with these refrigeration cycles this is the key to really understanding what's happening